We messed it up again. What is up guys, 70 Savage here. Today we are starting an exciting project. We are cutting massive holes into the side of the Sprinter van and installing windows. The windows that we chose this time around are different than the windows we installed in Vangelina Jolie. We are installing Arctic Turn windows in this van right here. These windows are a gold wing style window that are made out of dual pane acrylic. The downside is they don't have that factory OEM look. The main reason that I went with these over the CR Lawrence type windows is the CR Lawrence windows are single pane glass. And I noticed while I was spending time in the Sprinter van, especially in summer, the heat would permeate immensely through those windows. A lot of the time I was inside the van, I had to keep my insulated window covers up, which defeated the purpose of having windows in the first place. So I thought that installing these dual pane acrylic windows would improve the insulation value and allow me to get better usage of the windows. They also have some cool extra features like an integrated bug screen and a blackout shades so that I don't even need to buy insulated window covers. Before installing these, I scoured the internet for installation videos and I couldn't find a single good installation video that actually helped me understand how to install these things. So I'm pretty excited to make the first one. So let's go ahead and get started. So before you even order Arctic Turn windows, it's really important to take measurements where you're going to put them. There are some fitment considerations to take into consideration. So when you unbox the windows, you basically get these three parts right here. The first two are the window itself, which is attached to the outer trim, trim ring that my thumb is on. And then an inner trim ring that goes inside of the van that kind of clamps these together. The third part is the window trim. That includes the blackout shade and the bug screen, one of which slides down, the other slides up. Basically what we're gonna do is make a cardboard template, the same size that we need to make the cutout for this window. We are then gonna go out to the van and cut a massive hole into the side of the van and hope that we made all of our measurements perfect, at which point we can slide this window in. Once the window is in, we need to make a frame. I'm gonna make that out of 80-20 aluminum. And then it goes outer window, outside the van, trim ring that we've made, the 80-20 trim ring, and then inside trim ring, and then the additional trim. So sounds a little bit complex right now, but we're gonna go step by step. So we have removed the inner trim ring from the window, and now it is time to cut out our cardboard template. We are gonna use the inner trim ring to do that. Basically the line that we wanna trace out is the line where these two pieces connect. On the inner window trim itself, the hole that we're gonna trace is this outside line on the inner flange. Don't trace this line, that would be bad. We wanna trace this one right here. Basically you have bolt holes right outside the bolt holes. That's the line you wanna trace out. Another way you can tell that you have the right line is I have a tape measure going from outside of that bolt hole to outside of this bolt hole. And it's showing 35, a little bit less than 35 and a half. According to the instructions from Turn Overland, the window cutout is typically three millimeters larger than the dimensions of the window that you ordered. And since this is a 900 millimeter window, that equates to 35.4 inches, which is a little bit less than 35 and a half. So we know we are in the correct place. So it's admittedly pretty challenging to get your pen underneath that flange and get the right angle and still get a marking up against the metal. However, I think this is the best we're gonna be able to do. For the straight lines, I'm gonna use a straight edge and a razor blade because they always come out much better with that. So this is how the template turned out. I actually lied. I ended up using the razor blade for everything and just freehanding it in the corners. So what you wanna do to test fit your template is take it and put it on top of the window or the outer frame. And it should fit nice and snug on the outsides. This is tough to do with one hand. There we go. Basically we have like a really tight fit on all of the outer edges here. It's kind of challenging because cardboard is not the best templating material. It's always like leaves a little bit of shrapnel on the sides when you try and cut it perfectly. Once this is cut in sheet metal, the sheet metal is not going to give it all, right? Like the hole has to be just a smidgen bigger than the window itself. That's why they recommend three millimeters 
on the vertical and three millimeters on the horizontal. So you just have a slight amount of room. What I'm gonna do, this cardboard template is like perfect. It's like ridiculously snug. I'm just gonna make sure to cut on the outside of the line with the jigsaw instead of the inside of the line, and that should be perfect. You just wanna tape your template up to the van, make sure that there's no wrinkles in it or anything like that. It's really important at this point that you tape it exactly where you want it. I spent about an hour just kind of looking around the van. It's up to you to choose how far back you want to mount it. I have my bottom right where it turns straight about six inches there. So now the stressful part begins. We just want to mark this perimeter with the Sharpie onto the van. All right, guys, there we go. We have ourselves a nice little line to cut from. It is now time for the scariest part of this installation, cutting a hole in the side of our van with a jigsaw. So we did a little bit of prep before we are actually gonna start cutting. We put some masking tape on the outside and we also have some masking tape on the bottom of the jigsaw in order to not scratch the paint of the van that we're gonna see after the installation's done. We've taped off all of the location that's going to have a bunch of metal shrapnel. I don't want that coming inside the van or falling down into the wall. Those foam blocks are just to pull it out so that the jigsaw blade hopefully avoids it. We put in a fresh metal cutting blade. I'm using these Bosch ones. These work really well, link in the description below. So before we actually start cutting with the jigsaw, we have to have a place to get the blade into the wall. I'm gonna use this step bed and drill in just a little bit bigger than the width of the blade. All right, guys, so a little bit concerning here. Basically, I drilled that pilot hole. And when I came inside, I realized that the pilot hole is way lower towards the structure of the van. So I definitely need to reposition my window upward. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much yet, but I gotta figure that out. Okay, so that was a pretty big mistake. Lesson learned from this one, what you guys should do, drill a hole in the center of your window from the outside and measure the distance to all the edges. And check on the inside and make sure that the distance is what you expected it to be because this most definitely was not. The bottom of that hole, since I drilled it a little bit above the bottom of the window, about an inch above, gives us enough room to clear inside, just barely, about like a quarter of an inch. So pretty lucky, but yeah, we're gonna remark out the template here and we'll get back to cutting. That was pretty close, but we have saved ourselves from this mistake. This is our new position for the window right here. We are now ready to start the very, very scary part once again Jigsaw. See, isn't it great to watch other people make mistakes that you don't have to make them? <laughs> we messed it up again. JK, y'all, it's the perfect fit. Look at that, baby. We have like the perfect three millimeter gap. It almost doesn't move at all. It's just slight, slight amount. Here is the first look from the inside here. I believe we're gonna be fine on the clearance here. So now the window is out and we need to cut off at least an inch of these supports. One right there, one right there, one right there. And on the other side, you can see I've marked where I need it. We're gonna need at least an inch. It'll make a lot more sense in a little bit why that is. We're basically gonna use our Dremel with a metal cutting bit on it and we're just gonna grind our way across. All right, we finished Dremeling off these pieces right here. So we have about an inch and a half gap there, as well as two on the bottom. They're just completely flush with the factory line down there. Now, all we need to do is paint protect this. So I'm gonna wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol, all the edges, and then we are gonna paint protect it. Also, don't forget to sand down the edge to deburr it. For paint protector, I use this Rust-Oleum Matte Black High Performance Spray Paint. I use it because it dries in 15 minutes. What I do is I spray it into this cup and then I use this paintbrush and I go around all of the edges, front and back. We got all of the edges paint protected. Came out pretty nice. I actually switched to one of those inch thick foam brushes about halfway through and it made it much quicker. We are back out the next day. We took off the tape and the hole is looking fantastic. I bet you if I didn't show you guys the mistake, you never would have noticed it at this point. So the last step is we are gonna put our vacuum down in this crevasse here for the final bits of shrapnel that have come off of our window. I got this little tiny, tiny extension kit for my vacuum. Like, look at that, that's a quarter inch thick. That's gonna be perfect for going down in there. For the next step here, what we're gonna be doing is building a frame that's gonna sit inside the window and be clamped between the outer 
and inner frame. Now, the reason that you have to do this is these turn windows are not engineered to fit on vans. They're not engineered to fit on sheet metal. In order to make them work, you basically have to create at least an inch gap in order for this window to work correctly. So there's tons of different ways that you can do this. They recommend using either wood or aluminum tubing. In our case, you already know what we're gonna use. We've got our 80-20 extrusions here. We're basically just going to create a square frame out of these bad boys. In order to create this frame out of the 8020, this is 10 series by the way, so it's one inch thick. We only need four parts. We need the extrusions themselves. We need these T-nuts. These are roll-in T-nuts. You need bolts and you need the angle brackets. When you put these together, it ends up looking like this. The bolt goes through the angle bracket into the extrusion, which is fastened with that T-nut that we were showing. And then you can put another one on this side in the same fashion, therefore making a square. So we basically need to make our square the same dimensions as this window. It's gonna sit on the outside of the cutout here. In our case, 35 and a half in length, and then 21 and three quarters in height. Measure your own cutout though, don't use those dimensions. Also remember that one of the lengths that you're cutting, whether it be the top two or the sides, need to be an inch longer so that they can overlap and make the square. I don't know if that makes sense. All right, we've got ourselves a frame. It's already feeling nice and strong. Let's go ahead and test it out. So links to all four of these parts in the video description below if you wanna make this bracket yourself. Also, don't forget to Loctite your bolts if you are using 8020. So the bracket fits pretty well. We do have one problem. It collides with the inner framing on that corner right there. So instead of cutting it out of the van, I'm just gonna shave off a corner there in the aluminum and we should be good to go. Guys, really important tip with the jigsaw when you're cutting through metal. Set the jigsaw to a pretty high speed. I set mine one notch below max. You wanna be either full throttle or no throttle. Do not try and half it to ease into it. Every time you're getting started with the cut, jam full throttle and then work your way into the cut. If you let the jigsaw slow down too much, it's going to catch and then bounce out of the hole and cause dents with whatever it collides with. All right, so we fixed her up. It now clears well. Keep that in mind when you're making your cutout. It's not a big deal. I cut it out pretty easily, but uh, something to consider. All right, so now that we've got the frame cut out and it fits perfectly around the edges, what we need to do is attach the frame to the inside of the van sheet metal. So although there are many different ways to attach the frame to the van, I am choosing to use VHB tape. It's basically just really, really strong double-sided tape. They actually recommend this as one of the possible ways to attach these things. There's a few different brands of this stuff. I will put the best value in terms of quality and price as a link in the description below. I found this stuff at my local auto store and it was insanely expensive for how little you get. All right, we have the tape applied to the frame. Now we gotta actually stick it to the van. It is looking perfect. We got the line just absolutely perfect on all of the edges. Really stoked about that. It is now time for the final step. We are actually going to mount the window. So we've basically picked up the outside portion of the window, the window itself, and just placed it in there. And we have it held in place with masking tape right now. And then we are gonna place the inner frame inside of the outer frame, how they fit together when they came in the box. And now all we're doing is going around the whole outside of the window with these screws that the actual window came with and a screwdriver, very important, this is not an impact wrench, definitely use a screwdriver because they recommend to do so. You wanna make sure not to over tighten those bolts that go in there or the screws. They say you want this gasket to be about 50% compressed. Do make sure to add some Loctite to each one of these bolts. So it is now time for the very final step of this window installation. We wanna mount the curtain thingy to the window itself. Now this has a bug screen and a blackout curtain and they can connect together so you can go 50-50 if you want. Basically, we need to attach this to the inner frame here. Think about whether you want the blackout shade or the bug screen on the top or bottom. You can flip this thing around and have it like a house. I like them on the bottom because I can slide it up and peek out if I need just a little bit of light or if I'm trying to figure out what's going on outside of the van. Basically, this thing is hanging with those hangers right now and we still need to drill the holes. In order to do that, we just gotta pop open these on each side, you kind of just grab the corner and pull upward. And then once you pop them open, you can see the holes right here. We 
You basically need to drill a pilot hole through here and then attach one of the screws that it came with in the kit so that it's mounted to the 8020 directly. Yeehaw, brothers, we just got our window installed. I lied, there's actually one last step. Ah, so nice. Dang, check it out, y'all. Everything works. It doesn't collide with our galley. We actually have way more space than I thought, which is awesome. So everything works just as intended. I am super stoked at the quality of these things. So I have two more windows to install back there. It is exactly the same process, except the template's gonna be a different shape since they're different size windows. I'm gonna finish those. I'll be back in a bit. During the installation of the second two windows, I did come up with a few additional tips that I haven't talked about yet. The first one is that the lines on vehicles are not straight. I mean, the Sprinter especially is notorious. So this top line right here that goes above the windows, that's actually not a straight line I figured out. So. You gotta make sure that the lines that you're measuring against to make sure that your window is square are indeed straight. Second tip, be mindful of the corners of the bracket that you're making. They're going to extend farther than the hole that you're cutting by quite a bit, about three inches in the corner. So make sure that you do have room for those corners. You did see in the first window installation, I had to cut that corner away. It's not ideal, so just make sure you're keeping those corners in mind. Tip number three, make sure your jigsaw is set to have the blade go straight in and out and not that kind of circular motion. Tip number four, do not let your jigsaw battery get low. If you're using a cordless jigsaw and the battery gets low, it's going to lose power, catch on the metal, bounce out, and cause dents in your van. That did happen to me one time, but it's so small that if I don't show you guys or if I don't tell anybody about it, nobody's ever gonna know, except for me. It's really not that bad. And then the final tip that I have is instead of using that Dremel, I actually ran out of batteries. It was getting dark last night. It was supposed to rain and I was like, crap, what am I gonna do? And I thought, why am I not just using metal snips like for sheet metal? Uh, I ended up using metal shear snips. It creates way less of a mess. It does not get as good of a job. You do bend the sheet metal a little bit, but that's all gonna be covered up anyway. And in my opinion, sheet metal snips are the way to go over the Dremel for those little extra minor braces around the window that you have to cut out. And I actually have one bonus tip for you guys. I just got back from Jeremy's shop and he was cutting out windows in one of his vans. He actually used a tool called a nibbler rather than a jigsaw. It's a tool that was specifically designed for cutting sheet metal. It doesn't have that same risk of popping out and kind of skipping across your sheet metal if it gets low battery. So consider using one of those. All right guys, so it is raining outside tonight. We did a little high stakes water test. We actually do have one leak here. It's extremely strange. There's one drop about every five seconds or so coming from this corner. Back out here the next morning trying to diagnose what the issue is. So first off, if this happens to you, don't freak out about it. It's not that big of a deal if you have a leak, even if it is raining outside. All of the panels in the van are designed to drain water. The factory door handles actually leak. If you spray them with water, the water is designed to go in and then drain at the bottom. So it's not a big deal. One of the rivets has actually come out of its socket. I believe that's the reason why it was leaking, Nice, so I just had this thing taped in. I shut the door, forgetting that I was going in to install the screws before this thing was for formally mounted, and it literally just dropped out, collided with the ground, so. Today's a little bit brutal, bringing back some memories of the floor project. These bolts right here are what originally came installed on the window, but they actually came with some extra screws, some of which were shorter. So I'm going to use the shorter screws here these ones right here, which actually still have enough room to bite, but it's gonna be less likely that they actually go into the interior frame or that they get screwed in too far. So despite the happenings today, I do actually have some pretty good news. I understand exactly what the problem was and we fixed it. So these two windows no longer leak. Through all of the debugging that we did this whole time, the original rivet that fell out wasn't the actual issue. It was a symptom of the underlying issue. Basically, the problem was using the long screws that came originally inserted in the window. Instead of actually squeezing the window shut, they screwed all the way into the metal 
of the outside flange and did not allow the window to compress fully. This is 100% user error. This is all my fault. I still think that these windows are fantastic build quality and I highly recommend them. So all in all guys, very stoked with how these windows turned out. Hope that you guys learned something from this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.